Hello, I'm Richard Phobes, the bald explorer, out on another walk. And this time, I'm with Corinne. Hello, Corinne. Hello, hello. Now, today, we've come to Brighton, haven't we? Yes. And the sun may just go in, just as we start filming, but where are we? We're just outside the Royal Pavilions in Brighton. Absolutely, the Royal, the magnificent Royal Pavilion. So we thought we'd just take a little stroll around there in today's video and uh, see what we can see really. Unfortunately, we can't go into the grounds at the front here because uh, they, they're they obviously doing some work and they don't want people to go in. But um, it's a magnificent building and uh, it's uh, obviously one of the pulls of Brighton. But it's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? It, it is an amazing. It's, and and it's, it's extremely iconic, isn't it? It's very iconic. I mean, it's what people come, one of the things people come to Brighton for, um, because it's so unusual and almost eccentric. Yeah, absolutely, because there's nothing else here, well, in the south, or I don't know if there's anything else in the country like this. It's hard to imagine that it started life as a very simple, rustic farmhouse um, back in the 18th century, in the late 18th century. Oh, so this would have all have been farmland up to the this sea? This would have been farmland up to the sea, and it's, yeah. it's really thanks to um, the Prince Regent, who became George IV. Um, we'll pass a statue of him in a minute. And he was advised to come to Brighton, or Bright Helmstone, as it was then called. Oh, was it? Um, to take the seawater because of his gout. Yes, and he was young. And he was young, Wasn't yes. He? I think he was only like in his early 20s. That's right, yeah. So the idea of having gout then, he must have had a very rich diet. <laughs> Especially as a king, you know, suffering from gout, it must have been awful. So I didn't realise that. So this was just a, a farmhouse. Yeah, so it he took the farmhouse on, him and his entourage, and of course he loved it so much that it all started to get rebuilt. There's um, a statue of George, George V, because he became obviously the fourth King George, but at the time of this he was the Prince Regent. Prince Regent. And so when he first took this on, it was literally like an, uh, an English farmhouse, a British farmhouse. Yes, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't think it was a tight, you know, a smallish building. I think it was probably a pretty so biggish not, so building. So nobody had imagined all of this splendour and this architecture and nobody, no, no, at no, that time. No, it was transformed to what we see in three stages. Right. Um, it was, I don't know whether it was just the fact that they weren't very happy with it or that they wanted to or keep rebuilding it. just their imagination it. grew over time, perhaps. Yes, you know. I suppose whilst he was regent uh, there was only so much that he could do and then when he became king of course um, yeah. it was essential that this was a statement of his royalty and his power and what a statement i mean look at it it's absolutely gorgeous isn't it i love the detail the windows don't you and yes the, the whole the whole detail it's clearly got some indian um influence in there but you were also reading it had some china china influence. oh yeah i mean i don't know whether perhaps that's inside maybe the the decoration inside because i, I don't know i mean I, but what i've seen when i in my visit to china is they're very distinctive shaped buildings um and they're not they don't look like that even i went to a muslim temple in um china and that had the same style that um sort of the roofs which are um, sloping. Well we've come round to I suppose what would have been the inside. Behind us you get um, the big gateway with its onion skin um, on the top or its where big would onion. The, where would the coach road well, be? Well I think come? all this has obviously changed you know because right. this is all now formal gardens. So is that like the, the, the little dome there on those four Four or five I think that would, be another, that would be another entrance. So those two domes, that's sort of the out, out, out I think extent of it, and that bit is sort of like marking the beginning of the building or something. Yes. Um, let's, if we walk round that way, we'll see a bit more of the, clearly what must have been the entrance once you'd got into the courtyard. This little bit here is interesting because that's almost like cloisters. Yes, it's like a little it? colonnade, I mean, I isn't it? Yeah, yeah, gorgeous. And of course, the, we're surrounded by a beautiful, um, building anyway because you have here in front on site you have now what is the Brighton Museum and Art Gallery 
um, and the Dome Theatre, which of course people come. This fabulous dome, but this would have been built after. It's yes, I mean all, all of it's in different stages, so yeah. it's hard to pinpoint any specific um, time. But I think what we see, the main body now, is thanks to the architect uh, John Nash, who completed it in about 1815. So it, it was all changed over, I think, a period of about 20 years, and that's about it. You can see how um, busy it is now this is with, the, with the people coming around and, and having a look, can't you, Corinne? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's so aesthetically pleasing, isn't it? The shape of the windows and then those little sort of bobbly bits along the top. And, but together, it's so aesthetically pleasing, isn't it? Beautiful. What an eye that the architect had. You yeah, know, what a, what a John vision. Nash, yes, a very, a, um, a, a very innovative man. And we could be somewhere else. We could have actually sort of like, you know, travelled off to oh, India. Oh, absolutely. You kind of feel that you've suddenly gone into, you know, the Raj, haven't yes, you, somewhere? Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, we're approaching the front entrance and you get oh. another um, glimpse at the sort of splendour and the, the grandeur of the building. But what's interesting is, of course, after the, um, the, the George period, or the, the, th the three George, well, he was the fourth of the Georges, of course, after the Georgian period, the Vi Vi Queen Victoria came along and she didn't like it she didn't like brighton oh, she thought she the people like were oh. too um too noisy and oh. troublesome she didn't like them at all the troublesome people of brighton absolutely now this will interest you because you're a nurse during the first world war this was turned into a uh, the pavilion hospital oh and yeah. there were 720 beds wow. and 3,200 soldiers, um, many of them from India, wow. who were supporting us during the First World War, were nursed to health here. That's no small number, is it? That's, that's no that's small pretty, number yeah. over the period of the war. Gosh. Um, and that's, that's part of its history, I think, is often quite easily forgotten right. because it's not so much presented, but it played that enormous part. And that's amazing isn't it from sort of absolute opulent that sort of really rich lifestyle to something very sort of functional and yes, purposeful. Yes, isn't yes. that amazing? Blood guts and yes. screaming I mean you know you <laughs> couldn't go as you say. Well nursing you know medicine at that time wasn't a pretty affair was it? No. <laughs> Let's just uh, move around to the to the other gate entrance and have a look at that. So we'll just walk through as if we were part oh. of the royal party yes, coming through. Yes. Let's just stop and of course you can go inside, but um, we won't because you... No, because we're difficult for the filming as well. Well, you have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we come back out, and this is the other, what I imagine is the other um, gate, gate entrance here. And then we get uh, the sort of the southern end of it. We can't actually go through the gate, but we can get up here and, and have a look at it as we go past the Royal Pavilion shop, it says, and then we get into a sort of an eatery area, one of the many in Brighton. Well, it's quite posh, it's quite, quite posh end, isn't it, I imagine? It is very posh end, yes. Yeah, yeah. So here we are, we get the classic, the classic sort of southern, southern view looking northwards through both, through both gates, through both gates there. Sorry. Oh, it's got that thing that's very British, isn't it? Like you have this absolute gem and then everything else is sort of built up around it. Well, of course, um, you know, that is that is the British, you know, we're so limited for space here, yes, haven't we? That as yes. soon as you but all cross these the parameter... the styles, it's like a mosaic, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. And, and this is the great thing about looking around at cities and towns and things, because, of course, you're walking through different periods of history. We're looking at it as if it's all now. But of course, all of this, as we said at, right at the beginning, was original farmland. Yes. And then before that was probably nothing. And it's really... Forest, yes. probably. And it's difficult to imagine that farmland down to the sea. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. We well, got, yeah. yeah, little farmers and fish. Because and Bright Helmstone was just a tiny, insignificant little fishing village. Wow. Anyway, we come to the end of our little stroll here at uh, the Brighton. Uh, pavilion. Hope you've enjoyed that. We'll go and do some more in the future, won't we? We certainly will. Yes. So thanks, Corinne, for bringing me here, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank Until you very then, much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.